Welcome to episode 20 of the WINS Live interview series. I'm Amy Sheridan, host and founder of WINS Media. Today I have Odessa Jenkins with me, who is the founder and president of the Women's National Football Conference, the WNFC. Also president at M Train. I, I feel like I want to talk about both a little bit. I, there's so much going on with both. But welcome, Odessa. Thanks for having me, Amy. I'm excited to be here with you this morning. Let's get it. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I get ahead of myself a lot. But what I like to, you know, mention is we met very recently um, uh, via our mutual friend, Joanne Pasternak. Shout out to JP. <laughs> the, the incredible Joanne Pasternak. I yeah. will tag you on this episode, Joanne. Um, but, when we met, it was over Zoom, of course, because we don't live in the same area. I'm in the Philadelphia area. Actually, where are you right now? I'm in Dallas. You're in Dallas, yep, in okay. Dallas. And Joanne was in San Jose. So we met over Zoom and we had a really cool conversation where I got to really get an inside, you know, listen to you speak about what you're working on with the WNFC. And, you know, I was just, it was like a, like a mind blow. Like, I was like, whoa, you know? <laughs> this is awesome and you know the way that the passion that you have for it is just so evident and just it's just comes through so strongly that I was like I really 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 want to bring her onto the series so thank you for accepting my invitation no happy to be here anytime I get an opportunity to talk about the WNFC or M train or women doing badass stuff I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in so thanks for having me cool platform Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so let me give your intro. So Odessa Jenkins is co-founder. I, I have founder, co-founder, both, right, uh, of the Women's National Football Conference, president at M-Train, which is a workplace technology company that maps inclusive culture to behaviors and focuses on behavioral change. Um, I'm really interested to talk about that. That I dug into that a little bit. And I was like, okay, this is, this is really interesting. Yeah. Um, as a disruptor in sports, Odessa is paving the way to create inclusion and equity in sports for women and girls, clearly. That's the plan. That's the, <laughs> that's the purpose, at least. <laughs> um, that's why I'm doing it. That's my why. So, yeah. So there's so much that I want to talk about. I was reading some of the recent press coming off of WNFC. Um, there's, there's a few really exciting things that I uncovered there, which I'll ask you about, but the two things that bubbled up to me, which seem like they're sort of your approach to life. Really, I mean, you correct me, I'm, 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 I'm kind of leading into it, but you know, the words allowing women and girls to compete at the highest level, um, was one of the themes. And the second theme was um, having a purpose that's bigger than the top or the bottom line. So I sort of read both of these things in, in different locations, but can you talk a little bit, a little about that before we hop into the business side? Yeah. Um, you know, what's interesting to me, that is the business side. Um, I think the idea of women and girls being offered the best of the best and giving the opportunity to do everything at the highest level and to have something that was built with them in mind um, is unique in the way that sometimes products are created, particularly in sports um, and team sport, really, especially if you talk about contact sport. So for me, the WNFC was my way, our way, because there's a lot of people that are involved in it, of saying, you know what, women and girls are playing football, um, they're coding, they are um, getting into business, they're moms, they're doing a lot of things. And whatever they're doing, they should be offered the highest level to do it in the highest platform. And my platform in particular as it relates to sport is football and tackle football. And so for me, I, it was important for me to create a platform that was the most prestigious level of the sport and that demanded all the same things of women and girls in football 
that are offered and demanded of men and boys in football. And so that's, that's, that's that part of it. And then the, the other part uh, is it relates to um, not, not focusing on the, on the top of the bottom line is really in today's world, um, commerce has changed, capitalism has changed. And the things that we value now um, that absolutely seem to have no value before are tremendously valued today. And it's changed um, the way we look at our businesses, in particular data and storytelling, and that we are all getting smarter uh, about how we tell our stories. And there is this epic white space of telling women's stories um, and telling really diverse, inclusive stories that now more and more people want to hear. So I think when we start looking for brand partnerships and sponsorships and going to events and buying apparel, all these things that make up the WNFC, we now see a valuable commodity because these are stories that have never been told. Um, and so to me, that was about talking about white space, a white space that sits in between the top and bottom line, that if you capture, um, you go and do something special, not just in business, but you change our world a little bit. You tell the story that's never been told. And that's what I'm hoping we're going to do. Uh, not hoping, but that's what we're doing with the WNRC. Yeah, that's what you're doing. And I love the visual of the white space between the top and the bottom line. That makes a lot of sense to me. And out of that white space becomes, it's the stories, it's the guts, it's sort of the body of whatever it is that you're promoting. Um, it's really exciting for me to hear you say, you know, the things that I brought up that are sort of your personal mantras are also business mantras. And it's a great segue to my first question, which you know, it was clear to me when we first spoke that you pour yourself into this, this you're wholeheartedly, you're in everything that you do. Yes. Because it's all, uh, a, it's a line. Any other way to be, there is no other way to be for me. I'm all in, I'm all in or I'm not in. Right. And so you're all in and everything that you do, at least how it's presented, right, mm -hmm. um, is aligned. Uh, you know, you're pouring yourself wholeheartedly into the WNFC, the company that you work for, where you're the president, M Train. Um, these are both organizations that are built on specific mission-based platforms. You're, you're sort of living that mission every day with everything you do. And I think that's incredible. I think so many people, I mean, I don't have any data to support this, but you don't come across people every day that are really living in their true alignment. And you're doing that, so yeah, no, it's <laughs> like that's incredible. No, I'm lucky, uh, and and a lot of the conversations that I have are just about that. Is um, I walk authentically, and I know that that's a super popular word now is to be your authentic self. Um, but I was, you know, everyone has their superpower, right? Um, their special thing, their brilliance. Uh, everyone, we are all brilliant in, a, in a, a unique way. And one of my gifts, my brilliance was that I am very comfortable with who I am and always have been. And I walk strongly in who I am and what I want to do. And that, that, that gift, that ability has really driven me to only do things that align with who I am and what I care about, my core purpose, my why. And so, yeah, I'm lucky in that I don't do almost anything unless it aligns with my core purpose or I'm having a really good time. Uh, but that's just the way I'm going to, I'm going to live my life. And I decided that a long time ago and it served me well. So yeah, when you see alignment between M train and the women's national football conference or anything else I'm involved in, um, it's purposeful. That's not on accident. I, I'm not doing that. I didn't fall into living a purpose driven life. Uh, it is very intentional because that's, that's how I want to spend my time. Right, and it, it must be really great. I think people listening would agree that you don't have to change your dialogue during the day. You don't have to change your approach, you know, like so many people going about their day. You know, maybe they wake up and they're who they really are and then they have to go to work and they have to put on a different face and they have to, you know, everything that you do, you, like you're saying, you can show up as your authentic self. Um, that must be really nice. 
it is uh it is it is beautiful um it is living life without a mask right i mean we all i've seen it i've seen it in corporate america i've seen it in startup businesses i've seen it in sport where if you and particularly as women you feel like if i want to get somewhere i have to embody the ideal of a woman who's gotten there before because there are so few seats at that table, particularly if you're an achiever. If you're a woman who's an achiever and you're like, I wanna go higher, farther, faster than most of us go, then representation matters, precedent matters. And so you think, how do I get there? I have to look like her, I have to be like her. Uh, and, and for me, I think it's really important that I am a representation so that when people look, they see me just being me. It's not, you don't have to copy who I am and what I do and how I fist bump and, and, and my lingo and the fact that I'm just, if I want to wear, I almost wore a hoodie today. Like that's a nice blazer you got on, but I wear what I want. I, and, and so I just think that the, the best thing that we can do for her that's coming after us is to be ourselves up here. Um, and that, that really is important to me. So it's intentional. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a brilliant way to live your life, whether you are where you want to be or not, because life is short. I think it gives a lot of people courage or the little push they need to, to do that. So thank you for doing that. I, I, I love it. And I cannot wait to get into your story. And by the way, I wish I was wearing a hoodie as well. <laughs> I live my life in hoodies, you know, when I'm not doing what I'm doing here. So you could have. Um, it's so funny. I was on a, a call with a client um, and I got on in the morning and it was an internal call and I had my hoodie on. And I can tell my team was like, is she going to the client meeting? Um, and it went over well because I jumped on and they were like, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, you know, I'm feeling hoodie today. That's what I'm doing. Um, and I think that um, it doesn't diminish your brilliance to be who you, particularly when you are in your home. Um, I need to do everything I need to do to be mentally sharp, physically sharp, emotionally stable. I need to take care of me so that when I'm walking with a tough, tough call or a strategic conversation, Whatever it takes to make me feel like my best me is what I want to put on my body because I get to own that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your what you're work what you're working on now. So you're in two on, I mean three, really. I mean, that I I count. I mean, actually it's probably way more than three things that you're <laughs> tracks that you're running on right now. <laughs> but the three that I have here, I mean, first I want to mention that not only do you are you the president um, at a company called M Train, you are also the president at WNFC, but you're also the head coach of a uh, you know football team. Yeah, yeah, there's, there, that's probably the three biggest tracks. Uh, my family would say that they're they're, they're the biggest track, but there's um, yeah the the WNFC, and I have great teams and all that. I think the you know, you're talking about my tracks, but really the thing that that spans across that is uh is the teams that I run with. I run with I run with some really strong teams. Uh, but yeah, the Texas Elite Spartans is 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 I'm the head coach of the Spartans, and um, I'm proud to be the CEO and founder of the Women's National Football Conference, and extremely excited about the work that we are doing at M Train. Uh, like I said, I'm lucky. I think uh, at M Train, we're changing the way people experience the workplace, and that's cool too. It's all really cool. I don't know where to start. Um, so <laughs> let's start with WNFC, um, which, from what I'm reading, is the highest level of tackle of women's tack tackle football in the United States. I yes. counted 18 logos. Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> okay. That's so a piece of news that I pulled, which was really exciting, and, and you have all of the info on this, I'm sure, is the five-year media rights deal with the Vire Network. Huge. Huge. Yeah. Can you Big talk deal. about that? I can. Yeah. So um, Vire Network is, is an amazing company. I try to align myself with brands that are that have been through some adversity and that and that uh, mean what they say. And their their founders, David and Lamar, are career entertainment executives um, and owners. 
They own multiple companies, hip hop magazine. They've done a lot. And uh, right before the pandemic, they spun off to go digital with some of these really uh, world renowned uh, magazines. And um, that digital um, asset was Vire Network, a streaming um, content company um, that is streamed in 120 com countries and has millions and millions of, of bits of content um, where they are really trying to change the way that the content creator exposes, has ownership and distributes their contract, their content. Like they're really trying to turn um, that market on their heads and I met them early on when they were just getting getting started. And my vision was similar to their vision. I said, you know what? Um, only 7% of women's sports content is making it to primetime television. And women's football is like last in line when it comes to distributing that content. So I want to, you know, if, if, if those big cameras aren't going to turn to me, I want to turn my big business to the little cameras. And soon the little cameras will become big cameras. And they, they were all on it. And we started out with Vire Network in uh, 2021, distributing all of our games post-production. Um, and now we're gonna be streaming every single game live on Vire Network, accessible on um, both Smart TV, Apple, Roku, Web, App. I mean, it, our games, um, women's tackle football content, the whole season for the first time in the history of this sport will be accessible in every country um, that you could think of. And so that deal um, is a production deal where we're going to um, invest in the production quality because the production quality matters, right? How people experience it matters. Um, we're gonna go live streaming. And then there's also ad revenue being created as a result. Um, where we have a um, we we have a profit share on so it's a it's kind of a revolutionary deal for women's tackle football it's um, this sport has never had anything like that um, and I'm excited to, that Vire Network f believed enough in us uh, to invest in the production and distribution of uh, women's tackle football. I'm really excited about that. Congratulations on that. That's a big deal. Thank you. Um, I'm anxious to see how that goes. I'm sure you guys will be pouring a lot into it uh, from the marketing standpoint, you know, social media standpoint. Um, but yes, very, very exciting. The other thing that I know about, because we talked about this, is the Adidas deal. And mm -hmm. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that because, you know, I grew up a soccer player. Okay. Um, and back then, Adidas and soccer were synonymous and now they've expanded. I mean, they've gone through a lot of change, I guess, in that organization over the years, but I'd love to hear a little bit about that Adidas deal and what, you know, what they're doing, what they're providing and all that stuff to the W. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been amazing. Um, both Adidas and Riddell Sports, um, you know, are um, the highest level when it comes to content, sports content, partnerships, brand partnerships, um, and equipment um, related to uh, football. They are, they are leading away. I mean, there's more um, uh, Adidas accessories on an NFL field than any other accessory, like they are killing the game. And back in 2019, Adidas rolled out a Breaking Barriers campaign, basically to expand, integrate, and grow women's sports. And it was mostly because of the visibility issue. At that time, uh, and that was just two years ago, it was 4% of women's sports was being um, shown um, and, and covered by the media. Now that has grown to be 7%, nothing to write home about, but it's, but, but the work that Adidas and others are doing is working. I mean, our content is, is increasing 75% growth in our content every year. It's wild. Um, and so the Adidas deal really was Adidas um, creating a brand partnership. They are the official um, uniform provider and sports accessory provider of the Women's National Football Conference. 
Um, they we just uh, signed another multi-year deal with them. So shout out to Cam Collins and Adidas Football for believing in us again and 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 saying you know that women's football and women and girls in football is is worth it. Um, is a is a brand asset that should be sponsored and and provided. Um, so that deal really gives our league the ability to put women and girls. We do. Um, a flag um, varsity athlete all-star game at our national championship every year. Adidas sponsors all of that gear um, across all of our teams, whether it be uniforms, discounts, apparel, um, street apparel, coaches apparel, the whole nine. Um, they sponsor all of the apparel through our, um, our championship game. So all of our all-stars, it's a humongous sponsorship. Um, the biggest, the biggest in our sport, and and it has helped us grow in a way that I don't think anyone will realize for for a couple decades to come. That partnership legitimized women's tackle football and put us on the map um, as a as a legitimate sports asset. So I can't say enough for what Adidas has done, and I think we paid them back. I mean, we we kind of we we call ourselves ten Xers. Um, we're nano and micro influencers, but if you give us something, we'll grow it ten X. And we've been able to show that, and I think that's why they continue to to do business with us. And then on the Riddell Sports side, I can't can't forget them because they are uh, the helmet of choice uh, for the majority of pro and Division One college athletes. And Riddell Sports did the same, and they took us and made us a prime account. Um, the WNFC, where we are the only women's um, entity that has ever had that ability. So we stand. And with the same account reps and the same treatment that they give the NFL and the NCAA Division One sports, I mean, we're are we have we had women for the first time in helmets in the Riddell Sports catalog. Um, that's what our partnership is doing. It is an infusing influence infusing uh, inclusion and diversity in the sport um, in the coolest of ways. So that's another multi-year deal that we are we are super proud of. That is awesome. I love women in helmets in the catalog. You know, I mean, certainly just, you know, I myself on social channels, I'm starting to see the content, you know, I, I mean, not just from WNFC, but I mean, we're seeing, you know, the highlight reels that are coming out on, you know, various channels, like, you know, Bleacher Reports highlight her. I mean, they're showing young girls just crushing it in flag football. and that's really exciting stuff. So I feel like you are sort of at the, you know, the precipice of this huge growth, you know, period for women and girls in, in football. And I yeah. love, yeah, I love yeah. that you're, you're, you're opening up the door for them to see, you know, what is the highest level for us? I mean, it makes me curious about the pipeline Right. Mm -hmm. um, but as you build the pipeline and you give them opportunities to begin to compete and see the path, then it, it just grows from there. Right. It does. The first thing that 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 people say is, how do you keep girls playing when there's no high school tackle football? Um, the only the first thing I say is women have been playing 80 years without ta high school tackle football. So the idea that there's no pipeline is just not true. We've been, they've been literally playing this sport for 80 years. There are 200 adult women tackle football teams in Europe. So this is one of the fastest growing sports on the, in the world for women and girls. And women, the same way that they are blown up and grown in flags, these girls are, I see the highlights that you're talking about, throwing dimes, shaking people, that, that same, um, you know, fire that's growing behind that content is girls actually wanting to play tackle. When they watch an NFL game, they don't think, oh man, I want to go play flag. <laughs> they, they think, I want to go do that. I want to be a warrior. I want to be a gladiator. Um, and when they come looking, they want it to look like the, 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 the standard that was set by what they just watched on TV. And if we can give the world nothing else, and if we can give the future of sport nothing else, we can give her that. 
that when it's time for her to come looking now there's 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 organized things that we are doing to build the pipeline right getting connected to flag getting connected to NAIA universities we have four head coaches of college flag women's football as WNFC players. We're building out a pipeline and a forum for women and girls in football. Adidas is helping with that. Riddell is helping with that. We have our charity, Got Her Back Charity, which is all about keeping girls in football. Um, shout out to Steve Smith Sr. for donating us um, and keeping, keeping that going, as well as Riddell for continuing to grant that. But we are doing things formally, but even informally, this hasn't slowed down. Um, all we're doing is making it pristine and, and creating opportunities and frankly, bringing dollars, eyeballs and cameras to it. Absolutely. Um, I love the, you know, idea that the pipeline exists, right? It's giving visibility to that pipeline. Exactly. Um, and, and, and that's powerful. I mean, the statistics, what you said, it's very powerful stuff. So this is, it's really exciting. I want to touch on M-Train as well. And I think, I mean, the two, they feel so similar. Mm -hmm. um, again, mission-based. Um, I wrote down social capital theory. I mean, I'd love for you to kind of dive in to the mission of M-Train. Um, some of the things that you're working on right now in this other hat that you're wearing. Sure, okay, sure. There. M -Train, M Train is a beautiful company that started um, by a employment lawyer as a compliance company and, you know, working with companies to prevent work, workforce harassment. And as over the last decade plus of gathering information from all of these learners from some of the biggest companies on the planet, there was a realization that there are certain skills that if someone has, they are more likely to one, enjoy the workplace, be safe in the workplace and influence others in the workplace. And we've come to this place in our world where we are telling the truth and being more transparent that we haven't had it all figured out. And really what this social capital building company that we're doing is really trying to do is now that diversity is something that is happening without choice because the world is just becoming more diverse. We have to show companies and people how to be inclusive. And inclusion just means that I'm going to be more we than I. I'm going to know how to operate with a we um, uh, disposition that versus an I disposition. I'm going to learn how to work empathetically and move empathetically, even though I am different. So while I separate my, celebrate my differences, my I, I'm going to know how to exist in the we. And that sort of social capital that gets built around this we disposition are all the things that make the workplace work coming to. They make you want to go to work. They make you want to show up. They make you feel belong. They make you valued. And so what we're doing is we have this beautiful platform that um, is, has some of the greatest content that you're ever going to see, Hollywood produced content. And we take learners through scenario-based situations and we teach them and show them and model behavior, good and bad, that helps them build these pro-social skills. And we focus on three areas really, on build, on respect in the workplace, we focus on inclusion and we focus on ethics. And we work with lots and lots of large companies and, and we're growing like crazy. So we're working with even more to basically change their learning development training programs to look at inclusion, to prevent all of the things that they wanna prevent, risk, workplace harassment, all of these issues, starting with inclusion, starting with pro-social behavior, starting with we, and we have a platform that builds those skills. So that's that's what M-Train is. The we disposition. So that speaks so loudly to me, you know, mm -hmm. because you sort of flipped it quickly 
right? Where people might come in and they say inclusion, I know what that is. I mean, it's being talked about constantly. It's making sure that there's, um, you know, an equitable representation, <clears throat> but the way that you described it is so individualized, right? It's, we're building, uh, teaching people how to exist in the we. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is so powerful. The work is we, whether it's, whether you work as an engineer and you're in your home and you don't ever see anyone, you are still doing something that is going to impact other people if you have a growing business. And again, building those skill sets, because, because inclusion is a skill, allyship is a skill, um, and telling you the truth about what's happening in your organization. I think that's one of the, my favorite things about what, what our platform does at m -Train, what our technology does, is after someone goes through our learning scenarios and goes through some of our courses, we, tell, we can come back and tell a company's administrator, a company's leadership team, the truth. Um, whether you think it or know it or not, when someone sees a scenario modeled and they're asked, does this, does this scenario exist in your workplace? And they say, yes, there is no other truth. That is the truth. What they feel, what they experience is the truth. And just that dynamic, that dynamic there is something that if we can help understand, can drive policy strategy and really infuse belonging. There's this whole concept of belonging. Belonging is one of the biggest business metrics you'll ever see because everyone's trying to keep employees and the great great resignation and all of these things. Now we care about belonging. Now we care about how you feel. Now we care about our unheard parts of the company because they're walking away. And so that has to be scalable. It, I'm, not, I'm not saying that M-Train is the only solution because you have to have a full solution. But if you don't have something that makes it scalable across the organization, technology that's really good listening technology, but also provides actionable insights, then you're missing. You're missing an opportunity to get better as a company and make people want to show up to work. And again, I come back to that. And I'm training us, we do we building workplaces that make people want to show up to work there. Right. I mean, I've worked for companies of all sizes, and this seems like something that would have been extremely helpful, um, you know, no matter the size of the company, right? Because the challenge of building a culture which it seems like that's what you're doing with M train teaching each individual the skills mm -hmm. to understand the way that the culture will work best is incredible so many companies that that's just not the case this has to you know you, you guys are just right there i mean with both wnfc and M train you're you're right there you're right on the cutting edge and you know it kind of it, it brings me to this one thought is so many women that I speak to who are sort of living their truth or they're, you know, competing at the highest level, whatever that means to them, whether that's in the business world or whether that's in the sports world, world as an athlete, um, you know, this sort of theme comes up, you know, it, it's, um, it's, it's just incredible to listen to you talk about that, um, uh, that on both sides of the table, um, you are allowing companies to sort of, if you will, compete at the highest level by being their best self. You're at the WNFC, so I'm championing girls and women so that they can compete at the highest level. Um, but also the other, the other sort of parallel here is, you know, with M train and WNFC is in that word, we, right. Because you know, that teams don't exist without we and, uh, leagues don't exist without we. And I would guess that that would be extremely important when you're sort of <laughs> tearing down a barrier. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's, uh, right? it's critical. I mean, at the, at the, at the very core of who I am, I'm just a coach, you know? Um, and I am, I gravitate towards things that bring team and bring us and bring we together um, because that is the core of who I am. And I love doing it through technology uh, because I'm so fascinated by the impact that technology has. And that's why I love what we're doing at M-Train. And, and you know, yes, we're doing it differently because we actually wanna see the partners that we work with. We wanna see people experience the workplace better. You go to work, you spend eight, 12 hours, six days a week. I mean, this is a lot of people spend a lot of time away from their families. It's the same thing with your sport. 
when you, it, when you choose to be an athlete, particularly a team sport athlete, and even when you're not a team sport athlete, you have a team. There are a team of people, there are a team of trainers. And so for me, the reason that I think you see that theme with a lot of overachievers is because you 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 want to move the we you want to move as many people as possible um, to a shared goal to a shared great outcome as you can you kind of are built for it I'm built to do that it keeps me going so yeah at the core of me I'm just a I'm just a coach wanting to move a team yeah yeah and you're right at the cutting edge of both all the things that you're doing you're staying right on the you know the crest of the wave you know that comes up a lot it's it's a theme where I guess you're using the word achiever and, and that's, that's a fine word that, that, that goes along with it. But, um, women that have achieved this, this certain status, the, you know, are competing at the highest level, they feel that same thing going on where they're like, well, there's a wave. Am I getting on the wave or am I going to miss the wave? Um, I got to get on that wave, you know? Um, <laughs> so I definitely see that here. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I love to compete too. Yes. Believe in something. I want to win with it. Yeah. Right. I yeah. think that's the other thing is you, you find in a lot of these women, I'm sure are competitors. Yes. Compete. Competitive is big, which is a good segue to the next uh, segment, if you will, um, where, you know, I do a segment called story time and <clears throat> what I'm going to ask of you here is to pick a word. So I have a list of words that really impact all people, but, um, you know, specifically women, because that's sort of the channel that we're, we're on right now. Mm -hmm. um, pick a word and connect it to a story from your personal experience. And it could be really any of your experiences, but the words are permission, confidence, okay. perfection, hustle, Courage, swagger, time, credibility, and trust. Ooh, those are so good words. These are some of the words that come up in my conversations, in my work. Some of them are barriers for people. You know, what word resonates with you? There are a lot there, but the one that I circled and I just tried to write them all down, but the one that circled and made me stop is time. Um, time is the most precious gift that, that we can have. And when uh, time gives you a chance and time gives you a choice. And so when I look back over my life and I think about all of the decisions that I've made and all the best things that have happened to me, um, it's because I was considerate of, of that, I was considerate of time. Um, I think of um, when I first went off and decided which university that I would go to um, and how it was the first time that I left my hometown and, um, you know, decided to take a, a basketball scholarship and go to a university that at the time was 1% Black and was in a town I'd never been to in San Luis Obispo, uh, California. And I'm like, it's beautiful, but it looks nothing like Watts. <laughs> um, so I just think about that I think about when I decided to leave California and come to Dallas um, uh, because of promotion or the time where I decided to take leave the path of the NFL and uh, start the WNFC. That was all because of how I value time and how I wanna spend it and what I wanna give to it. And so to me, um, there are a lot of stories that I can go back and draw back to I made the decision or I did the thing because of the way I value time. Time, time um, my, one of my favorite sayings uh, is from my mother and she used to sing this song. It says, don't wait till the battle's over, shout now. And because in the end you're gonna win. So that was about mindset, sure. It was about um, victory, sure. But it was about time and how you use your time. And my mom used her time to celebrate life. And so I just, I got, I value time. Yeah, I, I like the, the angle you took to that. You know, um, how you spend your time, you know, being conscious about making the decision that, you know, and you, you've, you've been consistent this whole interview, but you only do things that you feel passionate about, things that you wanna do. You're not gonna, 
waste your time, right? So I think that teaching really came off on you because everything that you do now is you're maximizing the use of your time here, right? You know, as a human, you know, in the roles that you're in. Uh, I love that angle. So thank you for that. Yeah, no, I think, you know, we talk about wealth and, and being rich. Um, I think that we, we are wealthy if we spend our time the way we want to. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you. And I think the pandemic really bubbled that up in a lot of people because like you say, with the great um, resignation, how do I want to spend my time? You know, for many people, it was the first, we keep saying the word time over and over. It was the first time they ever asked themselves that question. It's so true, right? People were, people were spending, you know, 20 hours a day on jobs they hated. They were in relationships that they didn't want to be in. And then you look at yourself and say, wait, I, these are my 24 hours. <laughs> like, I can, I can make it. I'm not going to starve and die if I decide to take a step back and maybe make two less dollars an hour or whatever it is, or decide to leave this relationship and, and, and build myself, whatever it is, or, or, or start this relationship or start a job or a company. So I think the that's one of the most beautiful things that I think's come off, come off of this disastrous pandemic is that we've all found a way to value ourselves in our time. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm, just, I'm excited for what that means for all people, but you know, I got an affinity towards women and girls. And I think that we are particularly empowered with how we spend our time right now. We definitely are. I mean, you can't look away from it right now. I think it's happening. The wave is there We're riding yeah. that wave. Right. Um, <laughs> So as far as women in sports, you're, you live the mission, you know, our mission at WINS, my personal mission based on, you know, my experience coming up through the sports industry. And that's the angle I take is building, um, you know, influencing gender equality in the C-suite, right? And so the statistic that I always hang my hat on, at least for now, and hopefully that statistic changes just as your mission influences statistics in the, the worlds that you live in. Um, <clears throat> but right now, as it sits, it's roughly 20% women that hold C-suite positions across the big four US professional sports leagues. That's all of the teams in the big four and all of the leagues. <clears throat> and so my mission is to influence that number and to grow that number so that, you know, for more women there, like, you know, with WNFC, there's a path, right? So this series was created with that in mind is let them see the women who have achieved a certain level in what is what I believe to be one of the most competitive industries that exists. The most. Right? Hands, so, hands down. so if you're a competitor, this is the place for you. This is it. This is this is where you want to be. If you want to take some losses, <laughs> take some L's, uh, along with those wins, get into the world of sport, particularly the business of sport. The business of sport is a tough one, but a rewarding one uh, because the scale is tremendous. And I agree with you. I think there's a lot of work to be done in the big four, but there's another, there's another, um, I think, path of work that needs to be done to, bi to build another big four. And I think um, people like me, I see in the world, I don't know, I see past the possibilities. And I think that um, something can exist uh, for women um, that, that could change the world. I agree. And, and so specifically to what you do, you know, you're a prominent woman in leadership. You're unapologetically breaking down barriers. I have your forging ahead with speed and agility. I mean, it all is there. Right. Um, what are some of the problems you're solving for? Like if we can dig into, you know, you, you dropped some of the data earlier on in the conversation, but what are some of the problems you're solving for right now in your work? And, and how are you going to influence the future of football in general, right? Or the workplace in general? And what, what are some of the biggest obstacles for you? Yeah, I think, you know, competition um, for eyeballs is, is when I think about one issue across all of the businesses that I lead in, 
um, I decided to jump into some pretty competitive spaces, uh, technology and uh, learning and development and compliance uh, and training technology is a very competitive um, wor workspace. And I think that at M-Train, while we are absolutely doing it differently, um, we, aren't, we aren't a you know, $300 million funded company. Uh, we are a small business and resources that are needed and eyeballs that are needed to really see us. Because I think once companies see us, and, and don't get me wrong, we're growing faster than we've ever grown. So it's, it's great. But I think that there is this continual need for us to be very clear that we are here and what we do. Um, because as soon as uh, and we're starting to see this now at M-Train that, that we figure something out. And now those that have resources are starting to say, me too, <laughs> us too, we, yeah, we build, we build inclusive skills too. Oh yeah, us too. We believe that working from inclusion to preventing workplace harassment is the right way to do it too. Yeah, change the funnel, do all that. You know, and so I think for us, it's being authentic, but also being heard um, is the biggest thing. And it's the same with the Women's National Football Conference, it's very competitive. I think there it's 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 more important because it's a startup. Um, you know, we're 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 about to raise a seed round right now and really try and as I told you, the production value is really, really important, um, in particular in women's sports. Like if you think about it, if I show it's like a I call it like the glam squad effect. Men's sports at the the big four have the glam squad effect. Even if the game is bad and players are not playing well, there's like 50 cameras and 60 mini cameras and boom mics and drones. And because of the cash that they're able to pull together, they, there's this production and this story that can consistently get told. And we need more sponsors in the WNFC. Uh, we need more partners. We need people to put more dollars around it if they truly believe in it so that we can create that same production and narrative and we can start to put out a product that's like, wait a minute, sport isn't necessarily slow. There's 30 less cameras. Like you give me, it's amazing what you can do with an iPhone these days, right? But if you give me, uh, if you give me 30 production level cameras, I create anything you want to see. And I think for me, it's one of our biggest things. And then, because um, once we do that, don't you know who our players are? The content, the stories can get told. It all, it all kind of takes care of itself. And then on M Train, I think continued, you know, those those companies that are led by leaders who truly believe and want to see these skills, these skills of empathy, these skills of respect, these skills of inclusion being built in their workplace, they'll find us and they'll, they'll want, they'll want M train to be a part of their training and learning strategy. Yeah. I mean, you made some really great points here with like the obstacles, right? So there's funding, there's cash, there's resources, and those are all so real. I love the ga the glam squad. You know, give me thirty more ca cameras, and I'll make it look it's however right. you want it to look. It's, it's because I think people um, people make a lot of assumptions, but nobody's ever proven it, right? So it's like you know the 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 WNBA, the National Women's Soccer League, um, the LPGA, you know. Tennis, the, the women's tennis is 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 the pinnacle of women's sports. Like as much as we want love our our team sports, women's tennis, uh, the USTA is that is the 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 they are the pinnacle of women's yeah. sports. Both when it comes to revenue, right? When you look at um, uh, athletes who are generating revenue in the top twenty, usually, if there's a woman, it's usually a tennis player, right? And so if we think about what are they. Hmm, what are they doing? Well, there may a woman playing at Wimbledon looks just like a man playing at Wimbledon. And like, and we're surprised. We're like, oh no, you know, it might, it might be more expensive to show up with 30 cameras to a WNFC game. But if you show up and you give me the ability to create a production at the nine cup championship for the WNFC, that's anywhere close to half a tenth 
of what's invested in the big four, I'll turn around one of the most profitable women's leagues you've ever seen. Yeah, and I can, I can envision it because there's so much that you can do when you have that kind of production power. And so to your point, I mean, you're sort of competing against all of the big, slow moving, you know, tenured businesses and companies that exist that can pivot on a dime and just sort of like duplicate or compete right in your lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, you know, we've got a great, um, you know, national championship event. Thousands of people showed up this year to Dallas. It was a beautiful event. We had a big fan fest and, um, you know, it was great. It, it was one of the highest viewed events on, on Vire Network for the year. It's awesome. Um, but then we got the mullet championships on ESPN. So, you know, like, I don't, don't watch people. Oh. No, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say, you know? So all I can do is what I can do. All I can control is what I can control. And this, you know, I don't get invited into a lot of rooms because I say stuff like that sentence I just said, um, but I'm going to be the one that says it. I think that's hilarious. Um, you know, the mullet championship? It's the truth. It's a joke. That wasn't. A, I don't want anybody to think that wasn't a joke. I didn't just make that up. You no, I believed you. <laughs> it's the truth, and I you I knew you were telling the truth. I can pitch with the best of them. Right. I can sell anything. I can. I, it, I can be making thirty x what I make right now uh, as a human. Uh, so you can't tell me that I, I can't present what we do. Um, there are decisions being made that are not based on potential in the world of sports and entertainment. And that's what we're up against. Right. Yeah. I mean, that really speaks volumes. Uh, I feel, you know, again, I, I, this for me, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm so honored to have had this conversation with you to just feel the passion that comes through and, you know, everything that you're pouring into all of these things that you're working on, each one of them individually is so incredible. Um, <clears throat> I'd love to sort of end the chat with what are the wins you're working toward? I mean, there's so many, right? Yeah. There's so I'm many sorry. wins that you're working toward, but that's sort of the cornerstone of this organization is, you know, not only are we elevating the visibility of women, but we are building a network of women who can cheer each other on, celebrate their wins together. That's it's so important um, in, in industries like this, where we are just vastly underrepresented to be able to band together and create together and celebrate together. So I'd love to hear what you are working toward um, yeah. and how we can help you. Yeah, the biggest thing that's uh, coming up is I, our, our third season is kicking off in 2022. So we're starting in April. Um, we just landed our um, amazing national championship facility. Um, I haven't shared it yet, uh, but uh, we, we, are, uh, we are about to make an announcement on that that I think is going to turn heads in the industry where that thing's going to be hosted um, here in Dallas. And um, the biggest thing when that we're working on is to make the nine cup weekend. Um, our, our national championship is the nine cup named in honor of, of Title IX. Um, it's the 50th anniversary of Title IX this summer. And our biggest win is to make it the highest sponsored, biggest uh, event for women and girls in the history of the world. We want to create the biggest football for women event ever. That is a win with it we're working on. So sponsorships, um, obviously we're targeting all kinds of businesses, but women owned businesses. Now that we have the buyer deal, it's going to be globally um, streamed live on, on smart TV, um, on app, on Roku, on Apple. And so it's gonna be on TV. So now we have that. And so the biggest win that we're working on is to wake up on uh, July 28th, because the, the game's on July, or sorry, on June 28th, the, the game's on June 25th. The biggest win is to wake up on June 28th and see that more people than have ever showed up before showed up for a women and girls in football weekend. Um, 
And it was a, uh, an event that changed the way people see women and girls in football. That's our biggest win. Yes, it's an, it's an incredible thing to work toward. Um, so what I'm hearing is you're gonna come out with a big announcement. Yes, big announcement, it's coming. Um, so stay tuned, but the weekend is June 25th here in Dallas, Texas. And if you're interested in sponsorship or if there's a brand out there or a brand manager to say, you know what? I got something in my 2022 budget. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, they can reach out to admin at WNFCfootball.com. Um, but that is, uh, that's that event. I am, um, I am sure is going to change the way people see the WNFC football, girls in football, women in football. It's, um, it's going to be special. Calling all CMOs. CMOs. Right. CMOs. Cause you know what they could tell me is what you know, most of them are that's not women or saying no to women. So I think CMOs, if you're out there, this is your chance to say yes. It's diverse, it's got the eyeballs now, it's global eyeballs, it's new, it's fresh, it can tell any brand story you want it to tell. Say yes to this thing. Don't just look for what you've already done. Go buy some potential. And make go sure buy, the yeah. you go buy something new. Women, yeah. women know how to do that. We can go yeah, buy something. Can. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been um, an incredible episode. Thank you so much, Odessa, for joining me, um, sharing your mission, everything that you're doing with WNFC, with M Train as a coach. Um, and uh, we are here. Um, to help champion your mission as you grow and build um, into the next year. And uh, we'll spread this as far and wide as we can. And um, can't wait to catch up again uh, mid next year to hear how this went on the morning of June 28th. You'll be getting an email from me. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Tell all your friends. Um, watch, and season starts April 2nd. Season starts April 2nd. Tune in. Via Network. Via Network. All right. Thanks, Odessa. Thank you so much, Amy. I appreciate you.